go. Okay, so we I'm flying with Natalie, my middle daughter. We took off from um, Sydney a little while ago. We're both flying Cessna Citation business jets. She's in FSX. I'm in Prepare 3D version 5. Um, we are connected via Join FS and Discord. And we are just approaching Brisbane, where we're going to land. We're going to, looking at the wind, we're going to come in for runway 19 at Brisbane. So we're just managing our descent. So I'm just slowing down to 250 knots indicated. So if you go and look in the cockpit, we're down to 250 knots now. OK, we're beginning our descent, Natalie. All right. So down to 5,000 feet now, which will take us into the bay. Actually, let's go to 3,500. All right. And I'm going to change my vertical speed to come down at 2,000 feet a minute. Expedite this slightly. So we're just passing over the Gold Coast. So we'll be going over the, the sandbanks here and on our way into Brisbane. At the same time we're running this, I'm actually also running Volanta in the background. So that's been recording our flight as well. Something I am going to start just for a bit of fun along the way. I installed a small utility earlier called Landing Rate Monitor. And we'll leave that running in the background. You can see it's connected to the simulator. It needs a tool installed as well called um, Oh, HUIPC is it called, Natalie? FSUIPC. Sorry, FSUIPC, sorry. Flight Sim UIPC, yeah, okay. Um, and what that does is provides the data from inside the simulator to external programs. So the landing rate monitor will be triggered when we touch the ground and it will tell us at what speed we hit the ground. Or touch the ground, not hit the ground. And it will, you know, tell us, give us a landing report within the cockpit which would be quite nice. So it's a tiny little program that you can just run in the background. OK, so you can start to see the beginnings of the bay appearing below us. If you have a look on the map, we're just coming over these sandbanks at Southport. So I'm down to 6,700 feet. Still doing 250 knots. So I ought to go and set the um, radio up for the ILS. 110.1 and what was the course on it? 110.1 uh, 196 degrees magnetic so let's have a zoom in this is one of the free aircraft from Riku by the, by the way so we want this to be 110.1 so we go 110.1 and we switch frequencies to make that the active we're in selected uh, heading and altitude and vertical speed and speed mode on the autopilot. We're not using the, the flight computer because there really isn't one. This is a simple aircraft. You just fly vectors with it. So what did they say the direction of the runway was? 196 degrees magnetic. So we'll go and change the course for this to 196. So there's 180 there now. There's 190. It's going to be about there. Or thereabouts. Can we not get a tooltip to show us? No, it won't. That's a shame. Oh, is that showing us? Yeah, there's a course marker on the head-up display there. 196. There we go. Good. Okay, so I'm going to reduce speed as well, Natalie. So I'm going to come down to 220 knots. Whoops. Gonna let the speed fall off now. Yep. So we're coming in over the edge of the bay. So you can see Natalie's a few miles behind me and to the east. She's probably in a better position for the approach than I am. So I'm going to turn across your path slightly, Natalie. You don't Roger have. To, you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to affect you. It's all right. So there we go. I'm turning to north for a moment because I want to square off this corner before we turn in for the ILS. Okay. 
I'm sure you can make your own vectors, can't you, Natalie? You've got little nav map running as well. Yep. So now it's just about managing our speed to come into the ILS at two and a half thousand feet, going the right direction. So if we give us a, ourselves a little bit of lead time to get there. At least we're below the cloud now. Most of this journey was above a very thick layer of cloud, but we're below it now, which is good. It's quite turbulent. The plane's dipping around, isn't it? Try and look at the plane, see what it looks like. It's a Cessna Citation Sovereign. Natalie's out over there somewhere. Probably just too far away for it to bother drawing the label. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the cockpit. So where are we? Heading back to 340 degrees. We're down to 3,500 feet now. Speed is down to 220 knots, so we're looking good. I wonder if this thing has approach mode. Yes, it does. Mine does. Excellent. And I've got also brake. Okay. You have to try all the things out on the way in then. It, to be honest, it's not much hassle, is it? Just to use the brakes. <laughs> and this is a big international airport we're coming into, so it'll be a nice big long runway. It's not like we have to worry about stopping quickly. No. So yeah, this is the Cessna Citation Sovereign that I'm flying. It's one of the Riku freebies from the internet. Um, it seems to work very well. How are we doing? So I'm just coming in over the bay, 220 knots. I could cut the, sh the landing short actually and come in a bit faster than Natalie. And not worry too much about the ILS. So now we're over the water, I'm going to descend the rest of the way down to two. 500. So we're at the right height to enter the ILS. Yep. And I'm doing that at 1200 feet a minute. And you can see the altitude coming down over here. You can see the target altitude. We can see the target airspeed. So yeah, for a free aircraft, this is actually surprisingly good. Obviously a lot of the buttons are inoperable, you know, they don't actually do anything, but a lot of them actually work. Um, but things like the FMC, I don't think does anything, yeah. I don't know if they've hidden any switches on it to make it... Some of the free aircraft have a thing called a Bendix FMC, which is a bit rubbish, but... I guess it's an easy way of plugging something in that provides a, a flight computer. Obviously, the, the resolutions are quite low resolution. Sorry, the textures are quite low resolution within the cockpit, which isn't great. Okay, how are we doing? Oh, there should be some boats to see. Should we have a look out the window? Obviously, a bit further away than they, than they seemed. Oh, there are boats out there. They're just a long way away. Can I get a zoom on that? Not, not easily. Little pleasure boat messing around off the, off the coast there. Okay, I'm going to turn in towards the ILS. go to 300 degrees or 320 to begin with and see how that so that'll bring us over to here hopefully and then we'll double back on ourselves onto the ILS beam so we're getting closer you can see all the boats messing around so 
So what's this in the middle of the harbour? Mud Island Conservation Park, right in the middle of the Brisbane Bay. If we switch this over to street map, I wonder if it will give us different things. Yeah, it does, slightly different. So we're coming up for Brisbane International Airport. So I'm going to slow again now to 200 knots. So I'm going to keep an eye on the speed over here and we're going to start, when we get near the ILS we'll start dropping flaps as well and we'll drop to 160 knots and get the gear down and hopefully make a good job of it. How are you doing, Natalie? All right, I'm going to a Delta Oscar 28K. Oh there yeah, I can see it, Delta Oscar 28K. And then, what, and then Very is it that's in line with the ILS? Have you got Very as well? Negative, I've got Zorro. Yep, okay, so you're gonna double back after Delta Oscar 28K. Go to for Zorro, yeah. Yep. And that's just to the that will be just to the left of the ILS at that point for you, won't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm flying directly to Ojura by the look of it. Okay, so I'm going to slow, so I make the corner quite sharply to 180 knots now. I'm going to go to the first position on my flaps. So you can see the flaps lever has moved down here. So we're starting to get to the point where we need to concentrate. I'm also going to move myself up in the seat, which I figured out how to do with the keyboard in Prepare 3D, so I can see over the nose during approach, which is really useful. So obviously we can't see anything out there yet. So let's start turning for 196 Oops, gone too far Let's have a look at the map, see what our rate of turn is like I think that's probably going to be okay We might not be sh turning sharply enough actually So let's Put some more flaps out and slow down again. To 150 knots. That's looking pretty good. And there's the runways. You can see this is now on, so we're going to go for approach mode immediately. And we're going to let the see if the autopilot can sort it out all on its own. So, gear down. Flaps down further. So let's have a look. That's the outer marker. That we could hear then. So we are intercepting the center line automatically using the autopilot. So you can see down here where we tune the ILS in. The center line is approaching so the plane will start to bank right all on its own. Hopefully, if it doesn't I will take control. Looking good. Okay, so I am going to take control at this point. 
So autopilot off, speed control off, turn all of this off. Okay, I can't turn that off, but we don't need it. So, so I'm going to fly it in myself. So we're off to the left, so we're just tracking right again. Getting a bit slow. We're a bit low, so we're just pulling the nose up to get back onto the glide slope. back on the glide slope pretty much so coming into Brisbane International Airport we're a bit high so we'll let it sink back onto the glide slope and to be honest at this point you can go visually when you're looking for the touchdown points on the runway the ILS is really there more as a guide when you've got good visibility. 400. It's interesting, nice loud shout from the ILS. I wonder if this is going to throw any errors. 300. 200. <laughs> I've overshot slightly, but... 50, 30, 30, 20, 20, 20, 10. So there's the landing rate monitor that just kicked in. 250 feet per minute. That's a bit heavy, actually. So I'm just putting the flaps back up. So whereabouts are you, Natalie? Um, I'm coming to the zero two kilo. Okay, so you've got quite a way to go yet, then. Yep. I'm going to go a little bit over it, so it's in the middle of the ILS, and I turn okay. it one Okay, I'm exiting right towards the terminal buildings. Okay, right, Roger, Roger. Okay, so yeah, that was pretty uneventful. I wasn't on the centre line, so it wasn't the best of landings ever, but you can't win them all. It's the first time I think it's the oh, second time I've ever landed this plane. Or this model, I should say. There's no point going up to a gate because nobody will be able to reach it. <laughs> from this tiny little thing so I'll go and park over here on the right I assume we can park over here it's not going to get in anyone's way is it um, or maybe we should park over in the corner over there So there you go, approach into Brisbane International Airport for following a very unconventional route, but there's no other traffic around either. It's very odd. Though I guess with the pandemic there isn't any air traffic around, is there? Okay, I'm just going to park out in the middle of this concrete here. So. There you go. I'm going to have a quick look on the outside view, so you can see our aircraft there. It's 
that was the plane we just flew into Brisbane with and that is still out there so if we go and have a look at the little nav map here she comes so have you got the localizer Natalie? Not yet. So let's see if we can uh, can we see her coming? No, not easily. This, unfortunately, flight simulator isn't quite as good as X-Plane at that. So, I wonder if we could do it via Join FS. If I show the list of aircraft, if I go to Shamrock 570, which is Natalie, like, can I enter cockpit? The owner of the aircraft has not given permission for you to enter. Damn. Okay. We can watch it on the um, the radar, though. So we'll just watch Natalie come in, and then we'll stop recording. This is about eight miles out at the moment. I wonder if there's any views in here where we can actually go to the control tower and look around. Views. New view. Tower. Nearest tower. Yeah, we can't actually direct it to point to anybody though, can we? Views. Change view. Tower. Aircraft. Ah! Excellent! We're right behind you, Natalie. We're watching you come in. Okay. This one's a manual. You're coming in on manual? Yep. So, yeah, Natalie is... How old are you now, Natalie? 17. 17 or 18? 17. <laughs> She's 17 years old. She's been flying simulators for about a year now. Maybe or less less than that probably, about ten months. Eight eight or ten months. And she's learnt from yeah. scratch and she's really got into it via being interested in air traffic control. Oh I've just lost all the sound. I think that was my simulator. Um yeah, she really got into this by being interested in air traffic control. You're off to the right by the way, Natalie. Yeah, I know. Um and yeah, she's um been flying with a group of people called the Southwest Flight Simulator Group who live down in the southwest of England where my dad lives. Um, and yeah, she's been flying 737s. You're very low. She's been fly flying 737s and flying on autopilot. And so this is the first time she's ever had a go in a business jet. So I'm going to give her a bit of a pass. You're going very slow as well, Natalie. You're going to go in the dirt. How did you miss that tree? Cut the engines. That's why I lost the sound. You cut the engines. Pull back. Pull back. Oh, good try. Now you're going to blow your tyres to pieces. <laughs> Leaving black lines all the way down the runway. Oh, good try, Natalie. That was a rubbish one, but this is my first time flying this aircraft, so. Yeah, you've never um, flown this before, have you? No. Should have left it on approach mode. No, I was coming in manual. Wait, I didn't put it on approach mode. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You should have had it on approach mode. Then it would have been nice and smooth. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video there. So, yeah, there you go. An approach into Brisbane with a couple of 
people playing on simulators using JoinFS and Discord to talk. And so you could do this as well. If you go and visit virtualflights.online in your browser, it will do a redirection to our Discord group. And we are busy arranging all sorts of flights. What are you doing, Natalie? Have you got taxiways there on your version? Yes. Oh, okay. So she's got a difference in her scenery. So she doesn't see the same world that I do. So she's on a taxiway as far as her simulator says. It's one of the vagaries of all flying different platforms is you sometimes have different layouts on the ground. You can see my plane over there. So yeah, this is all made possible to do group flights with a piece of software called JoinFS. So if you're using Flights in 2020 and a mixture of other simulators, JoinFS will glue them all together so you see each other's aircraft. And obviously we're using Discord with a voice channel so we can all talk at the same time and chat as we're flying. So yeah, if you go to http colon slash slash virtualflight.online, you will find the Discord server I have set up to allow a community of flight simulator enthusiasts to join together and you know share knowledge and have fun with the hobby with each other. Anyway, I'm gonna stop the video there. Okay. See you soon.